Thank you for joining us for another episode of Your Health Moment. I'm your host, Dr. Fitness, and as always, we're going to discuss all things holistic health and wellness, so it's going to be no different than any other time that we do this. Uh, so today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Carrie Van, and we're going to discuss the shortfalls of the most common exercise programs and learn about Carrie's complete wellness or well-body method. And now to date, Carrie has helped many people transform their lives and go from living full of pain and fear to being empowered with lifelong tools for pain relief, injury prevention, and improved health and wellness. So over a span of 26 years, Carrie has developed numerous ways to help people to exercise safely. And Carrie loved to move uh, when she was at a young age, but struggled with pain. So Carrie is going to share some of that struggle and challenge with us um, because this is when she was motivated to find a solution. I appreciate you joining us, Carrie. Why don't we oh. start with you telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here too. So yeah, you you summed it up. I've been doing this stuff for quite some time and my personal journey is not separate from my professional journey. And um, I was born a natural mover. I just love to move. My mom put me in a creative movement class at age four. And then I got involved eventually in dance. Um, but my feet weren't really made to dance. And so like by my sophomore year in college, my feet had given out. And I had found that I was missing two joints in my feet. And so um, that was hard because that was something that I had grown to really love. It was an outlet. And I just became really proactive at that point about wanting to find solutions to find that freedom of movement in different ways. Um, and that's what, what I did through education and trainings and, and of course, using myself along the way. <laughs> that's, you know, it's fascinating. Dance is one of those amazing um, crafts that people do to not only express themselves, but to maintain really great um, health and um, fitness. So did you continue? Did you take, I mean, because, you know, if you're missing a bone in your foot, I would think some dance would be difficult, maybe like ballet and jazz. Were there other dances that you found that you could still participate in do? Unfortunately, no. And that was really hard. I mean, I was a dance minor in college at the time, right? And so, you know, I had to stop. My feet mechanically um, couldn't handle, definitely couldn't handle the ballet. They couldn't handle the modern. They couldn't handle anything. And I, I get it now. They needed, they needed to be supported. Um, so I had to be in um, what was called a UCBL. Um, to eliminate the pain, which is like um, kind of a, an orthotic plus, which is a little bit higher up, kind of almost like a, a, a brace in a sense. So I went into basically wearing hiking boots with, with a UCBL to protect my feet. Um, yeah, so dancing was not an option. <laughs> wow. See, wow. I could only imagine when it's your passion having to uh, give it up because of, uh, you know, something is important as uh as your feet not wanting to cooperate with you so what did you do instead so i went on i pursued education i got degrees in exercise physiology and then i just 
wanted to know, like I wanted to know this stuff. I wanted to learn. And, and, um, you know, I ended up um, being able to work in different medical centers all over University of Maryland, University of Pittsburgh, Duke Medical Center. But I, I studied movement, like tons of different movement modalities. Right. And so I kind of focused in on, on like the areas of like, how can we freely move our bodies and do it safely and protect our joints. And um, that, that was kind of like my focus. And, you know, along the way, I did not use exercise um, and eating as well in, in the right manner. So I did push through pain. I did accrue many injuries through repetitive movement, right? I injured almost every part of my body, right? <laughs> um, and I'm really hard headed. Um, and it really took um, basically a point in my life where I had to have two car wrecks kind of back to back because God knows that I am um, stubborn. He got my attention. And um, it was really, I think, at that point that, you know, I I began to develop my unexercising approach. I, I basically began to do things completely opposite than what I had been doing before. Interesting. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, you know, for the first time, I actually began to listen to my own body. Um, I stopped telling it what to do. I stopped pushing through the beginning the pain. And I began to really um, understand at a different level here, how valuable the mind body connection is. And through that, I began to focus on building a strong foundation for my body in a very different way than I had before. And, and this is really where I began to develop um, all the pillars for pain-free movement that I now teach. And basically it was like over the next, I don't know, 15 to 17 years that I would fit all these pieces together and be able to help, you know, people along the way. Interesting. What were the commonalities um, that people shared with you that made it easy to transfer what the knowledge you've gained from your body to helping someone to um, do the same thing with theirs. What was yeah. that connection? Was there a... You know, it was interesting because, you know, I was younger at the time. I was probably, you know, early 30s, 20s, and I was attracting a lot of people into my world, ironically enough, that had had um, a past physical challenge or an injury or surgery, or they just didn't want to hurt themselves while exercising. So what a gift. And, you know, I didn't really consider what I was going through at the time with all the pain to be a gift, but it turned out to be a gift, right? Because I could share. Um, so, and that's how I learn. I learned by doing. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of, we talk about the science of things, but when we're working with people, there's an art involved to that as well, right? Oh my God, that's <laughs> so true. And it's kind of neat because as you're talking, I'm thinking, Wow, one of the things that you, besides the pain that you all had in common, that you people that gravitated to you, but also the fear, because, yeah. I mean, pain and fear seem to be together in situations yeah. when, you know, we experience pain. There's also a like, oh, my God fear kind of reaction and there are two ways it's like oh my god what's going on or oh my god i gotta stop doing that yeah um because that's creating this horrible result um so being an art i think dealing with people's emotions like fear is mm. definitely an art yeah so is that when, when you say art is that what you mean by art or do you have something else in mind when you say that? I think it definitely is, uh, including emotions. We can't top the fact that we're human beings. We're, we're, we're whole, right? It's more than just the physical sense. But that physical outlet actually is what ha can help our emotions. One, And so I know for me that to be true. So, we, you know, when we're dealing with somebody with fear, you know, walking through your own fear is step one, right? <laughs> and, you know... <laughs> You know, it's like, okay. And so, yeah, knowing that there, there are so many things and so many ways that we can still find freedom and movement in our bodies in a safe way, no matter what pain we're dealing with or going through, um, you know, empowering people definitely is an art. I think it's also an intuitive sense about 
what's going on. And that kind of, you know, I, I believe we attract people into our world that are meant to, to work with us. There's so many things out there. Right. And so mm -hmm. intuitively um, knowing um, through working with the body and like, okay, yeah, this is, this is going to, this can be helpful or, you know, no, this isn't going to be helpful. And um, yeah. So I think it's kind of all those things combined. <laughs> I can imagine because even starting for people, for someone in pain, approaching them with any type of movement that they think is going to aggravate the pain, is like a non-starter. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, how do you get around that? How have you helped them to so navigate that? It, there's so many things involved. When I say pain-free movement, I just want to say that pain is the last red flag indicator of our body basically screaming hello getting our attention but you don't necessarily have to be in pain to be doing what i call pain free movement it is it's about there's crossover between <laughs> what we need to do to prevent injury or pain and actually what we need to do when we're having discomfort and pain and you know it boils oh, down okay. to i'm sorry <laughs> you know it's kind of like no, listening this is fantastic yeah please yeah, yeah, it's just like under, getting back to that unexercising approach is you connecting to your own body, understanding your own body, getting to know your own body, and that requires working against the grain of pushing and actually slowing down. Um, and so I think that's where it's at. We've got to sometimes take a, take some steps back. I know I did, and and learn to kind of and go there first. Yeah, if that makes sense. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, and understanding the process, because the fact that you've had to deal with it, I mean, it, it does move you way ahead in having an understanding of what other people uh, may be facing or feeling. Uh, oh, yeah. So, wow. I think it's a really great gift. Like you were saying, I think it's a really great gift that you're giving people. Very cool. And so in this, so this whole system is what now you created and it's the well, I'm sorry, I'm messing up the name of, uh, of the, the well body method. Mm -hmm. Did I get yeah. that right? Yeah. It's the complete well body method. And the complete well body method. And, um, so do you deliver it? One on one, have you expanded? Are you teaching other people to um, do the well body method? I mean, from a clinician standpoint, or are you um, primarily working with patients still? So I um, am working with people everywhere, and that is why I'm so I'm so excited because I basically have poured like all of my 26 years into the program, and I'm just really passionate about it because it's it's really more about a way of life for me, right? And I've just combined basically all the multiple areas of my expertise into a well-rounded experience for people. And so I always say it's kind of like you get five practitioners in one and, you know, it's, it's, you're really, we're really working on just developing those habits for pain-free movement into our lives while elevating our well-being. And I've made it I'm so excited that I've been able to make it um, convenient for people to do that and, you know, help them along the way. And so that's really what it's about. Um, for our listeners, could you share just one of the pain-free modalities that you have helped people with? Sure. You mean like one of the pillars like for pain-free movement, what I would consider a pillar? Thank you. Yes. One of the pillars of the... Um, complete complete well body program the complete well body method yes absolutely so one one of the pillars now i'll tell you i believe we need all of them but one of them is fascia release and for those of you who don't know what fascia is it is we can kind of consider it like a spider web like substance that covers our whole interior body, all of our muscles and things. And we can form a lot of different adhesions there um, based on many things, based on inactivity, based on overactivity, based on past surgeries or injuries or whatever it might be. But 
I'm, you know, super excited to tell people there's so many tools that we can use to help empower our own body and maintain our own fascist. Like for example, um, you may go get a massage or some type of body work, deep tissue, rolfing, whatever it is, right? And you may feel better after doing that. Yeah. I know. I don't I don't know if you have experienced mm-hmm. that. Um, right. Some of I you do. may have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too, right? Um and and the good news is that um, you can do plenty of things on your own to help work your own fascia because that's really what you're what's going on when you're getting a massage or or deep deep body work and you know I know I can't get um, body work every day or even every week right um, but I can uh, work my own fascia and I'm talking about the spine the neck the shoulders the legs the hips the feet all of those things and um, you know, at this point in my life, I, I'm pretty particular about the type of fascia products <laughs> that I use, but I'll tell you one really simple oh my one, God. you know, yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> We're I like, mean, tell us more. <laughs> yeah. So, so definitely the simple, the simple one that you guys have probably heard of. And if you haven't, there's probably, you can see one in the background there. My picture is a foam roller, right? It's that cylinder um, object that's, that's a, that we can roll on and do things. And, um, I mean, personally, I think there are like, for me at this point, like five things I would use the foam roller for. Um, but that's, that's an example of a tool to work our fascia. Now, um, do I just use the foam Mm -hmm. roller? No, I use all kinds of different types of balls, different sizes, different densities that I know work on my own body that I feel comfortable sharing with other people. Um, and and that's what that's what I do. And I have been blessed to learn about the fascia along the way um, through my own issues, actually starting with even feet related issues. And so, yeah, um, Yamana Zaki um, is a woman that um, she used to have a, a studio in New York City, and I had flown out there to work with her um, in person um, just to address the, the the foot fascia issue. And um, and so I love all of her products. Um, so if you're listening, you can go to yamanabodyrolling.com. There's all for, for fashion related stuff, but yeah, in a nutshell, it's just like, um, you know, we need different, different things for different parts of our body. And there goes, there's a lot that goes into that, that component. We're, we're working on using our breathing, slowing down that calms our nervous system. What a great outlet just for anxiety right? If we're stressed out, I know, no, some of you may never experience stress, <laughs> right? Nobody, right? Um, I know I do. Uh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> so like There's five no minutes. escaping stress in my opinion. Right. But there are of tools what, we can doing use. Like a planter. Now, I think like you were talking about feet and the, I think, yeah where people would really notice fascia is usually their feet. I think people are more aware of it when it comes to plantar fasciitis than almost anything else. Yeah. And so, you know, have you found that to be true or is, is that not true? (laughs) It's amazing. Experience. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. You mentioned that it's like uh, so many people I've worked with so many people with plantar fasciitis. I've had it chronically a hundred percent. That's an area. What look fascia, plantar fascia, it's inflammation of our fascia. Right. So yeah, I love being able to, I mean, get a, being able to get a grip on my own plantar fasciitis was game changing. You know, it's like, yeah, we don't have to go there anymore. There are things we can do to prevent that from, from happening. So yeah, a lot of people, because listen, when the feet are down, that really is a hello, a wake up. Now I can't walk, you know, I can't do, yeah, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. It's a foundation for everything. Yeah. And even if you're, it's a creating a situation where you're limping, I mean, then you're setting yourself up for a lot of other challenges structurally. A hundred percent. So yeah, getting to the root, I think That's is right. really important. And it's great because I never think of it the way you're, you know, explaining, you know, how important it is to deal with the fascia issues. And I think if a lot of people dealt with them in advance, 
there'd be a lot of injuries they wouldn't have. So to your point, it's a great way to reduce injuries and definitely a great way to um, even resolve some injuries. So, wow. Yeah. That's a really good pillar. Yeah. Yeah. It could be life changing. It's like we, you know, think about like a basic foot fascia routine as our foot fitness, right? Let's just like redefine fitness there for a second because that's important. (laughs) But three to five minutes of your day is just about, you know, making it a habit. That's all it boils down to. Just like our whatever type of exercise we're doing, it's the same thing with our fascia. Nice. So that's like a huge. Um, take away from this so if i mean this one piece is like enough to make it very valuable for anyone listening you know what you said in that one piece about fascia the one pillar so if one pillar is that um profound um i can only imagine how wonderful the other pillars are how can people get access to your complete well body method Sure. So you can reach me by going to the website at movementcraft.com, the word movement and the word craft.com. And great. And if you miss that, don't worry. If you go to the show notes, all the information is in the show notes of how to get in touch with Carrie and uh, Carrie's bio is there and any other information. Um, Cause Carrie, have you written a book, Carrie? Not yet. <laughs> but it's on the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I can imagine it is definitely on the way. Um, because just from your history, it's just you've worked in what in the medical field. Do you have a background in movement and dance? Um, where do you see yourself going next with the? Uh, um, with your career and with what you're doing now with um, the complete well body method, what's what's next in store for you? What can we look forward to next seeing from you? That is a good question. I mean, my goal is to help um, as many people as I can and get that the word out about the method and just be able to reach those people that I can. And, um, and then I think it's endless from there, right? I know we're always growing and um, that's how I feel. And so evolving. And so um, I don't have the answer, but I know I'm always being called in in that direction. (laughs) See, that's fantastic. You know, um, is there one final thought that you would like to leave with our listeners? Yeah, so you, you don't have to to suffer. You don't have to be in pain. You don't have to be afraid to exercise. There are so many things that you can do, um, to help your, to help your body. Um, and so just know that there are solutions and, um, and that's what I'll leave you with. Oh, fantastic. So there's hope. Mm -hmm. So the takeaway is whatever you're going through, there is hope. And it's just a matter of finding the right clinician for you. Yeah. Is that what I think what I heard you say? I think it's right on. (laughs) Oh, yeah. So don't give up. Um, Don't Mm -hmm. give up and don't stop trying to to feel better. Um, And I think, uh, you know, Carrie, this method is going to really help a lot of people. So thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on here too. (laughs) Well, it has been my pleasure. Um, So Carrie, thanks for joining us today. And thank you listeners for tuning in for another episode of Your Health Moment. I look forward to talking with you again next week. Take care and bye-bye for now.